Imagine you're having a normal midweek night at home and then this happens. No, let's stay where you are. Stay in the bathroom. Keep the door closed. Shit. Colin Lee. That's your apartment in Beirut. We could hear you there, I think, asking your children to, to stay hidden. What happened? Yeah, I was, uh, Louisa was back at about 6 p.m. Uh, my kids were on the couch in the sitting room and I was on the balcony just in from work. And uh, I heard the first, well, I felt the first explosion. I was pushed back onto the floor of the, the bedroom. Um, and I just scrambled to try and get up on my feet to get to them when the second explosion went off, which was the really big one, as you've seen. And that's the one that blew in our windows. And it didn't just blow in the glass, it, it blew in the whole windows and took the doors off of uh, the hinges. But yeah, thankfully, uh, thankfully not a scr scratch on either of them or any of us. So a very, very lucky day. And I, th I think you, you didn't really know what had happened. You, you took cover for a while. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, the, I've been in Lebanon for 13 years and you get used to the sounds of, of bombs and things, certainly in the early days when I was here. Uh, so I initially thought it was or felt it was a car bomb and I thought it was pretty close to the house. It was the second explosion that was really particularly terrifying uh, that it just felt like something else. And uh, yeah, that's when we, we sheltered. We have a room in the, in the middle of the house that has no windows. So we, we know that's the go-to room if anything happens. And we, we, we sat in there till, you know, at least for half an hour before we came out and, and had a look around. But yeah, it, it, the second explosion was, was something, um, yeah, I mean, you've seen the footage. It, it, it was incredible. The force of it was incredible. Um, the damage that it's done, I mean, I think we're very lucky, not just in our own house, uh, but in, in neighboring villages and or neighboring to, uh, apartments down towards the port area are just absolutely decimated. You work for the NGO Plan International. 48 hours on now, Colin. What's, what's the feeling like in Beirut tonight? Yeah, it's, uh, I think we've moved from sort of the shock stage to that there's quite a bit of anger, I think, amongst Lebanese residents, uh, particularly around the port area, as to what's happened. Um, they see this as, as sort of negligence. Um, and it's like a final straw. We've, we've, we've come through all sorts of difficulties, economic, social, political, um, you know, problems since October of last year. Uh, you know, the country is on its knees in terms of the economy. People have lost money in banks. The, the, yeah, the, the currency has devalued by 80%. It's really, it, this is a final straw. We're also going through a COVID-19 uh, surge in cases um, over the last two weeks where our numbers are doubling uh, on a daily basis, which is really scary. And, and one of the reasons I think that you know, maybe more people weren't killed in the explosion was be, well, firstly because it was at six o'clock, but a lot of people were going to uh, hunker down for, for sort of COVID-19 for the, for the lockdown that we were going into. Um, so we were probably lucky in that sense. But, you know, it, it's, uh, people are responding. It's an incredible sight down in, in the sort of Jamezi, Marmachail area where I was today. Uh, my mother-in-law, our extended family have a house down there and the damage uh, there in the front line, about 400 metres from the source of the explosion. And um, it's incredible, the damage, but incredible, the goodwill. I went into the apartment and there were about 20 people I've never seen before actually picking up glass and sweeping up and trying to clean up and save valuables. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, I, I think the Lebanese are incredibly resilient. They'll pick themselves up from this, but it's going to be a huge, uh, huge ask at this stage. You mentioned that there is a lot of anger now. Where is that anger directed towards? I mean, is there, is there trust or confidence in, in the government in, inquiry? Uh, well, I, I think people have just, it's just been one thing after another uh, where, we've, where people have felt, you know, that they haven't been listened to, uh, that they're worried about their livelihoods. Um, and, you know, a lot of friends of ours um, who, who've decided that they, they've had enough and they're leaving. And, and this was going back a couple of months ago where they're emigrating to Canada, the States or France because they've simply had enough here. Um, I was up at the uh, American University Hospital a couple of weeks ago. They laid off 850 staff 
Um, the university laid off 1,500 staff. It'll give you an idea, as big employers here in this city, of the level of you know, threat to people's livelihoods. People don't have anything. Um, you come to Beirut and you think, well, you know, it's a middle-income country. Um, you know, people are, are living on their bare means at this stage, and, and Lebanon really needs major, a major cash injection. I think you know, the international organizations here, like Plan International and the other bodies that are here, have capacity to, to deliver on the ground and are, are starting to show that. So you know, we've had a, a long tradition and a long history here of responding to you know, the, the refugee influx. And you've got to remember as well, we've 1.5 million refugees hosted in Lebanon for nearly a decade now. Uh, and I think it's probably time to give the Lebanese a bit of a break and, sure. and make sure that they get the support that they need as well. Sure, Colin. Finally and briefly, I mean, you will need aid. Will countries be willing to send aid to Lebanon in the current situation? Macron was in, uh, was in Beirut today saying there won't be aid for corrupt leaders. Uh, I think uh, some of President Macron's um, remarks today were, were, were taken very positively by the Lebanese. Um, as you know, we've been waiting on the EU, uh, on the CEDRA deal uh, of loans and, and grants to come into the country. I think governments are starting to show a willingness to inject funding into certain communities in the country that are badly affected, both Syrian refugees and Lebanese host communities. So we're hopeful that we will see a change. You know, to be honest with you, Louise, it, it, it's now or never. This is, this is the ultimate moment, I think. If there's not change now and if we don't get things back on track, we never will in this country. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Colony, thank you for talking to us. I know conditions not easy there tonight.